You're about to see what it's like to eat inside the largest and the most expensive buffet in all of Las Vegas. The venue spans over 25,000 square feet for hotel and non-hotel guests to enjoy. It has 10 kitchens, nine chef attendant stations, over 250 menu items, and an infinite amount of flavors from all over the world. Eating dinner here on the weekend will cost you almost $100 per person. But don't worry, once we're done tasting all the food, I'm gonna show all of you how you can get this expensive buffet dinner for practically free. And then I'll show you how to get a couple of free tickets to one of the coolest attractions right on the strip. So where are we? We are at none other than the Bacchanal Buffet at Caesars Palace at the center of the Las Vegas Strip. Now let's go eat. Now one way to get a better bang for your buck when you come to a buffet here in Las Vegas is to go for the foods that are generally gonna be costing more if you were to go to like a steakhouse, right? So stuff like your red meat or seafood, things are gonna be your higher price items. I'm going to get multiple plates full of protein. We're gonna start with this right here, but just something to keep in mind versus getting some of the cheaper food items. Getting things that are more expensive like the red meat and the seafood, that'll give you a bit more value for what you're spending here. They do also break up the food by section. So like this beef here, the asparagus from the Asian food section. They also have a part where it's Mexican food, seafood, numerous carving stations. They do have it sectioned out a little bit, kind of like by geography or types of food. This beef is great. Look at this, tender. I even like the asparagus. I'm not gonna eat all the asparagus, but I like it. Time for a rib. I'm gonna really taste the pork. It's not barbecue. This came from the Asian food section. So there's a little bit of the seeds on it, a little bit different taste. And if you're used to like barbecue ribs, like covered in like barbecue sauce, but this will do the trick. I generally prefer red meat, but I'll eat a variety of birds as well. So this is obviously a crab or was a crab. I don't eat seafood a lot. And I definitely don't eat this a lot. So I'm kind of struggling right now. So everyone can feel free to laugh in the comments section about this part of the video. <laughs> it's such a mess. I'm probably not supposed to be doing it this way, but whatever. <laughs> no one saw that, we're good. All right, I give up. I'm done with this plate, but we're just getting started. All right, now I'm grabbing some Korean. Kalbi ribs, awesome. You guys that know in Vegas, we have several awesome Korean barbecue places. This serve great kalbi. We got Korean chicken. I will take it, I will take it. Edamame, okay, fine. You guys pressured me into it. It's a vegan California roll. I'm taking a huge risk on this one. Mm. Filipino pork skewers looking amazing. Thank you, sir. Whole roasted pig, here we go. <laughs> this is a truffled deviled egg. This is like the most high-end looking presentable deviled egg I've ever seen in my life. And for you guys, we're gonna eat this, okay? Let me give you guys some variety. Ah, yeah. So we'll start with the deviled egg first, just because I am intrigued by how much effort went into making this look nice. Uh, we're gonna save that California vegan roll for last though. This is pretty similar to the other deviled egg I had. It's not, anything they put on it doesn't really take away from the flavor of the egg, so. All right, more sushi. <laughs> What a tangy flavor. Like, kind of zesty, I would say. A tad spicy, but strong flavor. I like it. This one's not nearly as strong. You can taste it, but it's a lot smoother. Not zesty, not spicy. So you're like, someone's got like a weaker stomach. Go with that one. Do this. <laughs> The Korean Kalbi ribs. Mm. 
That was kind of tough. Not spicy. I like the flavor on it. It's similar to what you've had. If you've been to a good Korean restaurant before and you've gotten kalbi, it'll be similar to that. You'll probably like the quality of it. The way it's cooked, there's a little bit of a crunch when you bite into it, but it's by no means overcooked. Time for Korean chicken. A little bit of a sour taste to it. I would not call it spicy. It's flavorful, but I would not call this spicy. Time for the Filipino skewers. This is nice and hot. Oh yeah, this does have a bit more barbecue taste to it. Gosh, if I'd have to show you guys more, I'd go back and just get a whole bunch more skewers. Well, the pig is okay. This last piece I just bit is pretty dry. It's not bad, but it's not great. So if you want pork, plenty of other items. Okay, no shortage of other items if you want anything pork. Take it to a vegetable, okay? Spicy edamame. Not spicy at all. Not spicy, it's really not that flavorful. I think it's enough of the edamame. So last and quite possibly least, we have the California vegan roll, so Give us a shot. It's okay. You can definitely tell there's no uh, protein in it. With the rice, whatever they have in there is a, giving it a little bit of a kick, a little bit of a spice, and you're crunching the veggies that are in the center of it. So, all joking aside, if you're vegan, chances are you'll like it. It's a pretty, it's a pretty tasty roll. Even coming from someone like me who's a heck of a protein eater. Hey. Try some different cheeses. Mm -hmm. Let's see. <sighs> so this time I made my way over more towards like the, uh, I guess called like the Mediterranean section. So you had parts where like Italian food, stuff from uh, Greece and that sort of thing. And it was still probably not even Eh, maybe a third of the way through the buffet. So this here is called, I think it's called Arancini. Uh, I'm gonna need some help from a lot of you foodies and like people that are really into trying a lot of different foods around the world. This, the, uh, spelled like gyro, but I know it's not how you pronounce it. Giro, giro, something like that. So I'm gonna just, now just dive in, I guess. I think I said over in the description, Kind of these are stuffed with rice. Yeah, it's gonna get cheesy rice on the inside and a little bit of sauce to give you with it here. Plus like some Parmesan. If you're a cheese person, you'll like it. Well, speaking of cheese, let's try some of this we got here. I just grabbed some, but I don't remember what is what, so we'll go with this first. It'll be a tiny bit of, of like, not even spice, but like a little bit of kick to it, but not a lot. Bland. Okay, no more cheese. I'm good. We'll try grandma's meatballs next. Mm. This bread is nice and soft. Meat lovers pizza time. I'm not overly impressed with the Mediterranean food section here. Like none of this was necessarily bad, but it doesn't have as much flavor as like the Asian food section. There's obviously also too, as you can see a lot more bread and carbs um, on my plate with this section of food versus the Asian food section where I could, you know, grab chicken or ribs or uh, whatever it was. So, you know, if I were to come back between these two, I would, Take, I would get more Asian food than I would Mediterranean food here. Surf and surf and vampiro tacos. A 
looks good. Woohoo, thank you. Uh, why not? <laughs> thank you, ma'am. Ah, so this time I grab some tacos and some more meat. So that's what I do. So as far as the layout of the venue here, when you guys get inside, remember we're talking 25,000 plus square feet at this place. So plenty of spacing for tables, whether you're party of one, two, or in a larger group, they can accommodate you. Um, the center area right here, that's where they have the dessert, like right in the middle of the whole place. But then as far as the rest of the food, they have it start, it, way back in this corner over here from where I'm sitting. That's one really long counter you follow that has all the different sections of foods, either by geography, or you said like the meats and certain things like that, seafoods at one end of it. So you can just kind of come and go as you please um, when you want. If you do want to order drinks, you can order them separately from this menu here. So this menu will give you a breakdown of what the individual drink costs. So if you want beer, red wine, white wine, they do have that to go with your meal as well. So we got chicken, lamb, and two different types of tacos, al pastor and surf and turf. Empezamos con el pollo. The juicy parts of the chicken are good. This piece I grabbed, some of it on the outside, I can see is a little bit dry just where it's been sitting for a little while, but the parts that are like all juicy and that have not been you know, exposed to the air as much are good. Chicken's a little hot. It's not spicy. I like it. All right. Now we'll try the lamb. Mmm. Mmm, mmm, mmm. This lamb is so tender. Chicken was cool, lamb was really good. I liked how tender it was and it was so easy to bite into and it came right off the bone. Like, I like the lamb. Now we're gonna try the Al Pastor tacos and the uh, surf and turf. So it's gonna be carne asada with shrimp. I'm gonna be putting some lime on it. Cause you have to. So. Oh. Serpent turf definitely better. Tacos al pastor. The al pastor is okay, but I had to tear off part of the outer shell here because it had gotten like too hard from sitting out. I actually had to break part of it off because I wanted to take that first bite. It actually kind of like poked. So I broke part of it off. The serpent turf, just more flavor between the shrimp and the steak. I'm more of a carne asada guy anyway. Um, the lime, there wasn't even that much juice in these limes really. So, Surf and Turf was better, but like, are these gonna be as good if you go to like a Mexican restaurant, have them made and brought out like fresh to you compared to, you know, having them made in bulk here? No, these are probably not gonna be as good as that, but it's just part of the entire collection of food you get for the price you're paying. Seguimos. I have a little bit of the tri-tip and the prime rib. So tri-tip, thank you. Prime rib, thank you. Then, can I have a little brisket too? Woohoo! Thank you, sir. All right, so we got some lamb T bone, we got some tri tip, we got some prime rib, and we have some brisket. As you guys can see in this video, I'm doing what I can to try a variety of foods to share with you guys my opinion on the quality of what I think you're gonna get here. But keep in mind, it's just that. Some foods that I may personally like, you may not, and vice versa. Also, a certain element here is really just luck of the draw, depending on when you go up to the counter, how fresh some of the foods are. So all those things can factor in. So I got a lot more to eat and to share with you guys, but I just want to throw that out there for when you guys are trying to decide whether or not you want to come here to eat. This lamb T-bone's okay. The other lamb I had earlier, the rack of lamb, way better. This is a little bit dry. Rack of lamb I had earlier was a lot juicier, a lot more tender, came right off the bone. So if you're gonna have two lamb choices, I would go with a rack of lamb. And I go with the tri-tip. Woohoo! Tri-tip is juicy. It's like when you go to football games, you order a tri-tip sandwich. It's fairly tender. It's not that difficult to chew. Now I'll go brisket. Brisket, not as good. 
I just pulled this part out here because it's pretty dang dry. Better to be able to dig through it a little bit and get to a part more towards the center. It's a bit more juicy. I think I like the tri-tip better than the brisket. Now, prime rib. Prime rib is looking pretty pink. It's pretty easy to chew as well. Not as much flavor as the brisket. I think I like the tri-tip the best. Tri-tip probably had more flavor than the prime rib, not as much as the brisket, but the brisket was kind of dry. Prime rib was not for the most part where I ate, the parts that I ate. So yeah, I would say on this plate, tri-tip for the win. We're gradually getting closer to the end, but uh, we're just gonna have to persevere and continue. So, that's good. Huh? I mean, it's just this part, right? You just eat this part? The whole egg? That's oh, okay. I've already eaten a lot. I've never had octopus salad in my life. I'm doing it for you guys. Ugh. Okay. Now, this plate, you guys can see I grabbed a slider, then I went for some of the seafood section. Now, I'm not even gonna be able to try half of the foods they have in this place. The 250 plus menu items, I'm not even gonna be able to get to even close to half that. So I grabbed a little bit of seafood. Like you guys have heard me say before, I'm not the biggest seafood fan in general, but I'll try a few of these and give you guys my thoughts on them. So first I'll try this, I think it's octopus salad or something like that. No, no, I'm just kidding, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. <laughs> I mean, it tastes like seafood. I'm not sure what this like dressing they have on it. Not quite sure what it is. I'm sure someone will help me out. A little bit of beans in here too. No, how often do you eat octopus salad? Okay, let's be real here. Seafood, a little slimy, not dry. If you're a seafood lover, you'll probably like it. I'll just, I'll leave it at that. This clam thing. So we eating here, I don't know, how do you do this? You're just supposed to like fork it out? Is that what you do? I don't know. You just like give it a four prong stab and just dig it out of there. Uh, whatever, that's what I did. <laughs> you part of that shell in my mouth? What the frick? Crab. Uh, I'm not too familiar with crustaceans. So the lady gave me one, and I, she asked if I wanted more. So I'm good. She actually tried to give me more. I'm like, no, I'm okay. She was like, break this leg, aren't you? Yeah, see, there you go. You can kind of figure it out. Definitely crabby. Holy crap. Damn. I never thought I'd ever describe crab as strong flavor, but geez. Yeah. And the seafood section over here in the line, that was in the last station I went to. It was probably the most popular. They had the longest wait to um, to get food there. So the seafood is definitely, if you love seafood, you can definitely load up here and get way more bang for your buck than you would like at a typical restaurant where you're just ordering like a single entree. I uh, apparently need lessons on how, how to eat seafood. Done with that. <laughs> now shrimp is something I can eat. Shrimp is a seafood that I can actually handle. Easily. Shrimp is pretty big here. It's pretty good size. You can taste so much just about anywhere else I've had shrimp. Dip it in a little bit, give it a little more flavor. The shrimp I do like. Before heading to dessert, We'll go ahead and try, they call it a Bacchanal slider. So it's ground beef with, oh, it's like a uh, cheese and, it's not onion. Oh, uh, cucumber on it. There you go. Got some juice to it. I like the slider. I'm just getting kind of full. Done with, I don't know, six or seven plates, whatever I've had so far. Now, the next section for a lot of you is probably the favorite, and that is dessert. Oh, 
Oh, oh man. I'm gonna gain a couple pounds just eating all this. Okay, so I got two, four, six things from the dessert station. There's even more things I could have gotten that I did not. I mean, they have other things there too, like uh, donuts, chocolate mud pie, um, some other things. So I got this vanilla cupcake, this espresso cone, um, cheat, raspberry cheesecake, the creme brulee, uh, triple chocolate cake, triple chocolate something, and then uh, two scoops of gelato. One was uh, peanut butter, the other one's just straight chocolate. And they have three or four different other spots. If you, there are other options if you want to put sprinkles on top, you can do that as well. So dessert section alone, plenty of options. We shall start with the gelato. Now I definitely had gelato in my life, but I'm not probably, not an expert on it. Mmm, creamy. Pretty smooth. Little softer than ice cream, a little harder than frozen yogurt. The peanut butter also has some chocolate chips in it too. So it's peanut butter and chocolate chip. And you can tell when you bite into one of the chips, you'll taste it. So next is espresso cone. I just, I don't even know if I've had one of these before, but oh well. Definitely tastes like a cone dipped in chocolate with strawberry filling. There's so much sugar in that. Oh my gosh. All right, try the cupcake next. This is the last thing I think I'll have to eat with my hands. This makes me think, this makes me think of like when you're in elementary school and some kid has their birthday and they bring cupcakes to class. When I was a kid in elementary school, I used to eat all the leftover cupcakes. Jeez. <laughs> the frosting is like almost as high as the bread itself. Okay, let's try this. Tastes like being back in second grade. <laughs> the cupcake bread is nice and soft, fortunately, so this container probably helps keep it soft so the air doesn't get to it and dry it out. So, no. Plenty soft cupcake, plenty of frosting, and sprinkles. So, it will uh, give you that sugar high if you were looking for it. Let's try uh, this cheesecake. That cheesecake is rich. I really like the gelato. I really like this cheesecake as well. It's kind of maybe kind of hard to compare the two, but no, I like both of those definitely. Now we'll go for this creme brulee, which I don't know. I don't know how many times I've had creme brulee before. This is, you know, what? I'm gonna try this with a spoon. I don't know. You supposed to eat this with a spoon? I am. I'm not sure how soft this is gonna be. Thin layer on the top where it's crunchy. The bottom is like this pudding. Kind of like flan. I think I like flan better. Whew, okay. Final food item is this uh, triple layer chocolate chocolate with shaved chocolate on top of chocolate for more chocolate. Wow. I thought the cheesecake was rich. This is super rich. There's so much chocolate. Oh my gosh. Now the full price of a dinner here at Bacchanal Buffet as of the making of this video on the weekend, so Friday, Saturday, or Sunday, is $84.99 per person. With tax, you're looking at $92.11, so almost a hundred bucks for this dinner. So if you're gonna go where you're gonna have to pay for it yourself, they're gonna print out the receipt for you here. If you wanna put a tip on it at the cashier at the front, you can. The cashier said that they share a tip with all the staff in here. So you can tip at the cashier up front if you like on your card, you give them cash, you can tip cash on the table. Here, however you like to do it, you can either way. Now this here, if you're going to be able to get it as comped for doing this dinner, that I'll tell you guys about in just a minute, they'll give you the receipt like this that shows $84.99, but when it's comp like this, there's no tax on it. So $84.99, I actually could have gotten like another, um, could have gotten like a glass of wine or a beer or something and still been under the $100 amount that I'm going to talk about in just a minute. Now, 
If I were to come here again, you know, can this place be a good value for the price you're paying? Certainly. Coming here again, you know, I would not, for the video I show you guys a lot, if I were coming here on my own, I would certainly focus more so on the meat section, the Asian section I thought was really good. I would not eat that much bread and stuff that fills you up that's really cheap. If you like seafood, definitely load up on the seafood. You get a good value for your money there. And I would not focus too much on the dessert area if I'm really trying to just maximize the amount of food I'm gonna get for the amount of money that I paid. But with all that being said, let me give you guys some of the uh, bonus value here that I told you I was gonna give you. Now that dinner's over and we've all gained 10 pounds, I wanna talk to you guys about this, this diamond status card. The reason I was showing this to you guys in the video and how I was able to just bypass the entire line and save myself about 20 plus minutes of waiting in line, because even the people at reservations still had to wait over 20 minutes in line for dinner. I got to walk right up. To get this diamond status here at Caesars is not as difficult as you think. Normally, yes, you would have to coin in a lot of money and gamble a certain amount. Typically, this takes 15,000 tier credits to get, which means you have to coin in 75,000 on slots or 150,000 on video poker to get this. However, you have one really great way you can get it is getting the um, Wyndham Business Earners credit card. You get the credit card, you can just match it automatically to get this. Now that credit card does come with a $95 annual fee. However, this diamond status, you get the $100 anniversary dinner credit to use. So that was what I used for here tonight. The high at $100 of free credit, you get to use it once a year at one restaurant. It's either use it or lose it. It's all or nothing in one shot. So if you only use 50 bucks of it, you lose the rest. And one more cool benefit of the diamond card I'll share with you guys for even more value here that is not on the website. You're not gonna find this on the website. You're not gonna find this in your account with Caesars. This card every month gets you two free tickets to get on the high roller over at the Link Promenade. You get an amazing view of this trip. Every single month you have to go to the kiosk, print them out, and what do you know? 